Our next element alphabetically is chromium and we'll shorten that to chrome. The symbol is CR atomic number of 24 and the atomic weight is 51.99. I've rounded these off those numbers go much uh, longer than that. Melting point is 3465 Fahrenheit which is exceptionally high melting temperature. There's the density and of course it's solid at room temperature. The element classification is a transition metal. And as far as the name, uh, the name came from the Greek word chroma which means color. And chromium is pretty abundant in the Earth's crust. It is the 24th most abundant element in the Earth's crust. So there's a lot of it but not necessarily easy to get at or to refine. An interesting metal. Now here's some of the characteristics of chromium. It's a lustrous steely gray and it's a very hard metal with that high melting temperature and of course it's corrosion resistance. You're not going to see it very often as a solid piece of chrome unless you work in a plating factory but most often you're going to see it as a piece of uh, plated metal or you're going to see it in the form of stainless steel. Now historically it goes back a long way to about 300 BC when they found some brown bronze weapons that had been uh, I'm not going to use the word plated but uh, they were coated with chromium and that was in China in 300 BC and even though these were underground it was in very good condition and that's rather amazing that they could have had it that uh, many years ago but as far as what we find in Western civilization it's uh, much more recent in the 1770s it was found in Russia in the Ural Mountains and at that time used mainly for uh, uses such as pigments in uh, coloring. Although chromium is found in the Earth's crust very plentifully, the largest producers are in South Africa, India, and Zimbabwe, and other countries too, but uh, this is where the uh, most of it would come from. It is considered a strategic metal because it can be used to strengthen steels. Most chromium is used to make stainless steel. So it's steel, chrome, and nickel that are the main ingredients of stainless steels and that's where you're going to see it the most often and that's why stainless steel is such an expensive product or anything made out of stainless is, is rather expensive and it's a hard to work metal. It's also used in high-speed steel, in Inconel, which is, we'll talk about that much later on, and it's used in chrome moly steel, which is chrome molybdenum steel, a high-strength steel typically found in tubing. But most widely it's used, not most widely, but you're most widely going to see it or be aware of it, uh, in chrome plating. Think Harley Davidson. Think of all the cars from the 50s when they plated everything from the bumpers to the grills to all of the trim to the door handles. Everything was chrome back then. There has been somewhat of, res of a resurgence in that now. Think Ford 150, 250 pickup trucks and all the chrome they have on the front end of them now. However that is chrome plated plastic. Disappointed? I guess you knew that. They've been using plastic with chrome on it for a long time. It's also very widely used for, the, for paint pigments because it gives brilliant colors, particularly school bus yellow. Originally, possibly not anymore because probably found a cheaper pigment, pigment or, or found something wrong with uh, the chrome. I'm not sure, but uh, yellow school buses were originally uh, made with chrome paint, chrome pigments in the paint. Also, I remember even since I was a child, a zinc chromate primer. And uh, Rust-Oleum made that and other companies too, but it was a particularly good protective uh, 
primer for bare steel. It's also used in the tanning of leather and I'm sure you've heard of uh, chrome tanning. On the bench I have several samples of chrome or chrome products. This piece of tubing here, it just looks like plain steel tubing but it happens to be chrome molly tubing and uh, of course it isn't marked in any way. I only know that because I came across a, a rather large quantity of that uh, and I was told that it was chrome molly and it is used often in roll cages of uh, race cars and things like that where you need a great deal of strength so much stronger than uh, just uh, common steel. So that's chrome molly. But look what else we got here. You know all of our plumbing fixtures that you see now, some of them plastic. You know here's a plastic shower head. There's a 10 cent shower head on a brass pipe that's chrome plated. You can see here where somebody put a pipe wrench on and some of the chrome plating peeled off. You need to use a strap wrench to protect the chrome on fittings. You don't see those too much under the sink anymore. There's the P-trap, but uh, well every sink has a P-trap, but they're often going to be plastic now. This is brass that's uh, chrome plated. He used it uh, on, as trim on many products. Now here's an old stapler I have laying around and I don't know how old that is, but you know it looks like they wanted to make make the stapler look like a Buick. All the gauges were chrome uh, bezels. There's my, my, an old reel I had forever. Fluger. Still very brilliant there on the bottom, but somebody had water in their tackle box and look at the corrosion that we've got there. more plumbing. Many many tools and wrenches are chrome plated. There's a, a Williams, we know that's a good one. But I was, when I was looking for different things I ran across this and here's one has real nice plating on it and then look what it says on here. It says chrome vanadium referring to the steel. But since there is no maker's name on this, you know, you wonder what's really in that steel. I doubt that it's chrome vanadium. One time I had a pocket comb and it said made of nylons embossed right in it from the mold and the uh, teeth kept breaking off of it and I realized, oh, somebody has a mold that says nylon on it, but they're using nylon on it, but they're using the cheapest possible uh, plastic to make the comb. There's all kinds of sockets. Snap-on claims that they double or triple coat theirs. Here's a pistol. Actually it's a starter pistol. That's chrome plated. Made in Italy. Do not confuse chrome plating with nickel plating. This is nickel plated not quite as lustrous and this is kind of uh, tarnished because it's been around forever but I prefer the looks of nickel plating on things such as guns and, and tools over the chrome plating. Not quite so gaudy. Quite some time ago, probably in the 50's, all of the major tool makers started satin chroming their uh, tools. Now I don't know uh, what that process is but uh, it's some type of chrome plating but they've taken away the shininess because you don't really want a micrometer or a measuring tool to be all that shiny but yet this is protected from uh, corrosion and also it's a very hard finish resistant to scratching. Here's my Atlas lathe, a rather inexpensive lathe and look what they did. They chrome plated all of the knobs and uh, hand wheels and things like that also on the tail stock to make it uh, give it good eye appeal and these are all really just 
cheap die castings here so it looks a lot better than it is. You're going to see a lot of chrome plated knobs on kitchen cabinets and bathroom cabinets and, and so on and it really dresses up a product so chrome is something you're going to be seeing every day uh, you have been seeing it but you probably don't think about it our next metal that is also an element is cobalt symbol CO atomic number 27 and there's the atomic weight a rather high melting uh, temperature about the same as steel it's a pretty dense metal obviously it's solid at room temperature and it's considered a transition metal the origin of the name is uh, from German cobalt which uh, meant evil spirit or goblin some other middle age foolishness and uh, cobalt is ferromagnetic like iron and nickel. Remember there's only three magnetic metals and that's cobalt, iron and nickel. Now there are several others that are paramagnetic meaning they have some magnetic qualities but they're more obscure and we're not going to talk about those. These are the three that are magnetic. Some of this information is from Wikipedia on the internet so I'm giving them credit and you can look things up on there and find out a lot more than what we have time to do in this real short video but some of the characteristics of cobalt are it's a hard ductile lustrous bluish gray metal and it's somewhat expensive because of its uh, uh, marginal rarity as far as history is concerned it was discovered uh, by Westerners uh, and given a name by George Brandt in uh, 1735 in Sweden and cobalt has been used to color glass since the Bronze Age so it goes way way back and the oldest uh, cobalt colored glass that, that they found is in Egypt and that's uh, 1550 before Christ so that's a few days ago deposits as far as where they find the ore uh, pure cobalt is not found in nature but cobalt is found in these minerals cobalite and others here that are not pronounceable and it's a com commonly associated with iron or with ores of iron nickel silver lead and copper and then uh, it's produced as a byproduct the largest good deposits are in the Congo in the middle of darkest Africa. As far as applications and uses, cobalt forms many useful alloys. It is alloyed with iron and nickel and other metals to form alnico, which I mentioned once before in regards to magnets. Alnico magnets were the strongest magnets before they came up with some of these ceramic magnets that they're using now and cobalt is also used in high-speed steel and uh, other cutting tools quite a bit in cutting tools for metal and it's used to color glass and ceramics and uh, cobalt 60 is an important gamma source in medicine and it's also used in lithium batteries and in paint pigments again to give blue but I believe they can get other colors out of it too I of course have no samples of pure cobalt to show you but if you recognize this beautiful blue cobalt bottle uh, that is produced by uh, cobalt and uh, this is glass but you know I really liked it when my mom would rub my chest when I was sick with Vicks and uh, here's a bottle of generic Vicks but this of course is plastic but they still stuck with the blue bottle because I suppose it's the trademark more than anything and milk of magnesia was another one now I got some cutting tools here that are marked cobalt you can see that what the percentage is in uh, this end mill I'm not sure but cobalt uh, makes the metal a little the cutting tools a little bit harder 
this is high speed steel Cleveland Momax and uh, it says cobalt on it I think that's like 8% or something like that here's a uh, Cleveland cobalt USA I'm more impressed by the USA than I am by the cobalt Chicago Latrobe and you're going to find that on drill bits all the time. Where did I see that? Right here. Cobalt. There is one big box store that has uh, uh, adopted the name Cobalt for their tools simply because it's a, I suppose, a neat sounding name that uh, sounds strong and it's, the marketers on Madison Avenue probably figured that out that that's a good name to use. But uh, that's about all I have to tell you on cobalt at this time, but you can certainly read a lot uh, more about it. Our next metallic element in alphabetical order is copper. Symbol CU. Atomic number 29, melting point pretty high. I have melted copper and it takes a lot of heat, but it's 1984. Pretty dense material. It's classified as a transmission, transition metal rather. And the name comes from the Latin words Cyprium after the island of Cyprus. It's a pretty common metal. Here's the characteristics of copper. It's a very ductile metal, meaning we can draw it into a wire, and really very fine wire at that. And it has great electrical conductivity, and therefore is used for uh, transmission of electricity. Also, it uh, transfers uh, heat and cold very well. Pure copper is soft and it's malleable and it's reddish in color when it's new or freshly exposed and as you know it quickly tarnishes and sometimes turns green as in the Statue of Liberty. As far as history it goes back about as far as any metals and about 10,000 years ago and the evidence of this is found in many many different countries so it was going on all around the world thousands and thousands of years ago and the Copper Age led to the Bronze Age as they tried to improve the qualities of the copper to make tools and uh, even cutting tools out of it. And weapons, of course. You know, weapons always were at the very edge of any kind of technology, and they still are. Some of the main deposits, and it's found all over the world. It's, uh, it's rather common, but most of the deposits aren't worth mining. But we have many, many years left uh, of copper in the ground and it's a very recyclable metal and it's valuable enough that most of it does get recycled but the leading producers are Chile, the US, Peru, China and Australia thank goodness we have large deposits here in the western part of this country applications and uses wire which we use in house wiring, industrial wiring, motors it's the windings in all of our motors and uh, starter motors and cars, uh, alternators, generators, and so on. Still widely used in uh, plumbing for pipe and the fittings, but being uh, replaced quite often by plastic because it's so much cheaper. It's also used an awful lot in the alloying of other metals, specifically bronze and brass. So most of you are probably familiar with it. A good part of that is copper. Used in roofing, statuary, ornamental things. The roofing, of course, is premium. It's going to cost a lot of money, and it's going to last a long time. They still use a lot of it in jewelry, even some of the foolish jewelry that people wear on their wrists uh, where they mistakenly think that it's going to get rid of their arthritis or something like that, but all it does is leave a green ring. Still used in cookware coinage, although we're getting ready to get rid of the penny here in the U.S., and used in wood treatment. Also remember from chemistry, or if you're burning a fire out in the backyard, if you've got a piece of copper in there, it produces a green flame, and that's something that we 
used a lot in the chemistry lab. I've got quite a lot of samples of copper around my shop and my house here and you know there's a coil of copper sheet metal relatively thin but you can see how soft it is that's the color when it's newish on the outside of the coil you can see it's already tarnished and it can be made into any thickness here's some uh, copper foil that we used in a crafts class sometimes used in a process called repousse I believe that's how you pronounce it and that is how the Statue of Liberty was made the copper was pounded into molds to get the shape that they wanted and then fastened together it was made in many many pieces not quite as soft as aluminum foil or lead foil but it's pretty darn soft there's a piece from a roof you can see how green it was on that side that was exposed to the weather like the Statue of Liberty or a cheap ring on your finger soft enough to where it's easily formed on the roof you can drive a nail right through it make sure you use copper nails not any other uh, kind of nail or it's going to cause uh, electrolysis Here's my copper hammer. I rather like that hammer around my machinery. Of course it's non-magnetic. Now there's a chunk of copper. That piece weighs about 25 pounds. I, I uh, even put it on the scale. Very soft. It's uh, very easy to put a mark in. Now most of this copper, I'm not sure if it's 100% pure copper, but I believe most of it is if it's real soft. And of course here's your plumbing fittings, there's copper tubing, all different sizes and every kind of fitting you can think of available at any hardware store. They're getting kind of pricey though. Last time I had to buy some copper I was kind of surprised. It's all quite valuable if you recycle it as well. So I got all kinds of those fittings. It is used uh, around uh, welders quite a bit. The ground clamps and the, the grounding cables and electrode cables. There's some copper tips from a spot welder. Here's some tips for a welder. They're used in oxyacetylene welding and in MIG welding and all the different kinds of welders. Here's yet another piece of copper. It's used in uh, bus bars, if you know what bus bars are, and heavy electrical panels, mainly in industry. And of course the copper wire, it's always hidden by insulation or it's hidden inside the walls, but there is copper in every home. And I just read something that there's approximately 400 pounds of copper in every house. I think that might be a little bit high, but when you think of it inside of every motor, and you have probably 25 motors in your house, and uh, this is copper out of a welding cable. That's why they want to steal those welding cables from the construction sites and burn them off and sell that. Because there's a lot of copper in the welding cables. It's stranded to make it flexible and easy to handle. Terminals of all kinds. But watch out because you're going to run into a lot of copper plate and uh, it's just it might be steel that's copper plated so you can always check it with a magnet and be sure but this is a very important metal there's a copper penny that we're going to get rid of but of course the new pennies aren't copper at all they're copper plated zinc or some other material they haven't made them out of solid copper in many years and even at that there was some alloy in there or the copper is so soft that it uh, it will bend a little bit if, if it's misused and you know how the old pennies would wear in your pocket so uh, they would wear out couldn't read the date on them or see Lincoln's face after a while but it was used in copper and brass coins all over the world for many many years still is in some places copper will leave a smell on your fingers now rub it and then smell it it uh, reacts with some of the acids and 
and chemicals in your fingers and it's a, it, it gives it off an odor. A very interesting metal. You can read a lot more about it on Wikipedia. Some of my information came from there, but I, uh, my dad taught me how to identify copper and brass. I think I was 10 years old and he said, you can sell this. And I, you know, I've been saving copper ever since that time. And lately it's worth quite a lot and I have quite a bit in my collection. I need to sell it today.